and welcome to my live studio thank you so much for joining me on this hot evening what a fabulous day it is today so if you are tuning in thank you for taking a little bit of your time to come and watch me here down at stamps by me so for those of you that have only just met me my name is tony darrick i am a guest presenter on create and craft tv i am a uh, watercolourist, studying watercolourist artist if you should say and I love to watercolour and the purpose of this studio is to show you and educate you with watercolouring, stamping, all the hints and tips that I've picked up along the way and I want you guys to be able to do it at home. So I know you have been watching and I know that a lot of you have been making amazing things. So. Thank you for that. So if you are watching on YouTube, please like and share and please drop us a comment and let us know where you're watching from so we can see who's watching, where you're watching from, whereabouts in the world you are. And if you are on Facebook and you have seen the link, if you'd like to pop on there or share it also so your friends and family can see it. So if anybody's wanting some inspiration or some hints and tips with regards to anything I do here at Stamps By Me, then um, everybody can see it so what do i need to start with first i need to say a big thank you first of all for last sunday for our circles of light launch it was amazing and lots of you have already purchased the products and are already making some absolutely stunning products if you are on our eureka fan page and you can see what everybody else has been making i hope you get as much joy out of that page as i do sitting and looking through the projects that people are putting on there because honestly it is knockout um, it's a free it's just a little bit of a page where you can go you can get some inspiration all you need to click is the join button and one of our D team members will accept you and you'll be able to see everything that's going on you will never miss out so today then I'm going to showcase a brand new product and then we're going to get straight down to some demonstrations about over the circles of light so one of the things that I'd like to showcase this evening are, are monochromatic ink pads. Now these are brand new. These will be launching on Create and Craft. The only two places you can get them are here with us at Stamps By Me and on Create and Craft. So pen at the ready if you are interested. So it's 190418. That is the item code. So if you go to the search engine on our website, pop that in the search engine, you'll be able to see the product immediately. But I'm going to give you a rundown on exactly what's to come with these inks. So our generation inks launched two and a half years ago purposely to create a perfect watercolored look. So if you are into your coloring, your watercoloring, then these inks are amazing. The special cushion was created so you get a realistic look and they also come with the reinkers, which is fabulous. They are highly pigmented and you can paint and create some amazing looking artwork. You won't be disappointed, I'm sure. We have a collection of one to four in bright colours. Then the ones that I'm launching today are our monochromatic ones. So basically, they are brilliant for your outline stamping. So if you want to step away from a black outline and want to do a blue outline, a purple outline, but really dark, so you have to take a double look. Is it actually black? Is it purple? Is it green? Is it brown? Um, these are really, really lovely. And I'm going to use the reinkers and paint a background for you today so you can see the true colours of them. So I'm just going to show you on this card the exact colours of what um, the monochromatic ones are exactly like. So you have monochromatic 1 to 5, so you have on there you have um, one with a green undertone, one with a purple undertone, one with a blue undertone, a steel colour and a sepia colour. These are amazing. So let's just show you this way. So I hope you can see the true colours there. They are really, really lovely. And you can use these for your outline stamping as well. But I am going to show you how to create a beautiful backwash using these and they will look amazing with your silhouette stamps. So your fairy stamps, your foliage stamps, your fence stamps, things like that. It's going to look amazing. So these are the re-inkers here. And as you can see, they all look very similar. 
um, it's quite difficult to see. Well, you know from our traditional reinkers, which is obviously the coloured ones, you can differentiate straight away. You can see the difference between the purple and the orange, whereas these ones, it's a little bit more different. So I do encourage you to do a swatch so you can see the colours and understand what the colours are because you cannot tell from the bottle. Before I go any further, I'm just going to show you some stamped ones of the colours as well. So this is MC1 and this has got a green undertone. Now I hope it's coming across on camera. Um, there, yep, you can just see there, this is MC01. So this has got a green undertone. So they've all got like a black colour in them. They are super dark, but they've all got a coloured undertone. So you can use them for your outlines as well. So this is the one with the green undertone. Excuse me. Then we have MC02 with the purple undertone. Beautiful. Then we have MC03 with the blue undertone. It's a really dark navy, is that one? Then we have steel, which is not quite black, but it's nearly there. And then we have the sepia. So it's black with a sepia undertone. So you can see there. So as you all know, I don't create for the sake. These will truly do the business that you need them to do when it comes down to your stamping and colouring. Okay, so I hope you like the colours. I'm just going to demonstrate some of the colours from the reinkers. So um, let's crack on. So I've got my um, picture postcard here. Just move these out of the way. And as you can see, I've got some colour in my wells already because I had a little practice before I came to air. So I dashed back from the big studio at Peterborough, Create and Craft, and I jumped straight into this dress and jumped straight into my own studio, and here we are again. So, and I absolutely love it. So thank you so much for joining me. So let's get a, a nice wash on here. So from our demonstrations that I've done in my live studio before, we've all done the wet in wet technique, and that's the one that I'm gonna show you because I do believe that these colors lend themselves really well to this technique. So, here are the colours that are on the side of the ink pad. So you can see here the gradation. So generation stamping then. The strongest three colours are stamping on the page and off the page. So you get like your generation stamping one, two and three. And then if you dilute it with water, you get the lighter colours as you move across. So that's what the spectrum colour is along the side. The great thing about these though is that once they are dry they are permanent so they are safe for your alcohol markers so if you are a Copic colourer or you like to use your alcohol markers wait till it's dry or blast it off with a heat gun and then use your alcohol markers they are amazing for that too. So going back to the demonstration I have MC01 in my well and MC02 so we've got the one with the green undertone and the one with the purple undertone. I might be telling fibs there. I, I am telling fibs, MC01 and MC03. So if you want to achieve this card, these are the colours that you're going to need. So I've got my artist canvas board inside my picture postcard. Now, if you were lucky enough to get this today on Creating Craft for just less than £20, well done you, because that is a knockout price. You will not be disappointed. And if you've bought it for a gift for somebody, well, they're going to be amazed by it. I would be absolutely over the moon if somebody bought me one. So back to demonstration I'm I'm talking a lot this evening so I'm just gonna wet the cardstock all over so you know when your cardstock is fully wet because the paper goes shiny okay so once the paper is shiny you know that the cardstock is wet Like so. So what we will do is we will do, just one second, we will do blue at the top and then we will grade down into our green. So I'm just going to drop the blue in. So this is like a really dark navy, it really is beautiful. And then don't contaminate your colours, remember to clean your brush between each colour. Pick up some green. Now, the true colours of these are come to life once it's dry. So when I blast this off with my gun, you'll be able to see the true colour. So I'm just going to 
dry that off a little bit and I'm just going to get my clean brush and I'm going to mix the two in the centre. Can you see that? And then ahead of time, what I've done is I've got um, 10 pence <laughs> wrapped in some tissue and it's in a circle. So I'm going to create a little bit of a moon. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap the top of the card and what will happen is it will create a little bit of a moon in the sky. If you want, don't press on because it will suck up a lot of the ink. Just drop it on. Can you see that? So you could either leave it as is like that, but let's go for it again. So I'm just going to drop it on. If you press on, it will remove all of the colour. That's how good these inks are. So I think we'll leave it at that. You could actually just go around a little bit more if you wanted to. Yep, we'll leave it at that. So there is a little bit of a moon in the distance, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it out of here and I'm just going to blast it off with my gun. I hope you can see the true colour there because it is true, they are truly beautiful. So if you uh, wanted to have a go with your pen or your pencil, you put a little boat in there. Just have a play, it's only a bit of ink, a bit of cardstock. I've had a lot of um, people message me saying they're ready with the cup of coffee, they've been in the bath, some of which of you are in your PJs and I wish I was the same. So I hope you're enjoying yourselves. So, what we will do is we will remove the tape so this is just some low tack tape, um, masking tape, artist tape, whatever you've got in your stash at home. Just make sure it's not super sticky though because it will tear your um, cardstock underneath. So just tear this off. Let's get it all off. So the reason we tape down is so we don't get the wave in the card. It really does help. Some people say it doesn't help, but I really do find it would help. It does help. So, just remove the tape. You know, take your time with it. You wouldn't want to tear your artwork. And the good thing about it as well is you get the beautiful white border, which gives it a professional feel, I always find. There we have it. So, you can see there? So, let's get a stamp on there. So, I'm just going to clean this um, um, top of this ink off here because I, I know what's going to happen. We'll get an awful mucky mark. So, I'm just going to get my um, foam mat now and swap it out. I'm just going to pop it in. And then I've got my, um, I've got one of our silhouette stamps um, I did already to the door. This is available on the website, but I do believe probably a lot of you have already got it. So let's get some foliage on here and show you how lovely these colours pop once you get the black ink on there. Now, if you didn't want the severity of the black from a general black ink pad, then you could use your monochromatic 04, which is more of a steel colour. You could also create a drop shredder with that as well. So I would suggest um, just have a play. I, I know a lot of you already do play, and I know a lot of you are achieving some fabulous looking cards. And I'm just going to move my artwork across slightly. Make sure it's within a bit lower. There we go. So because we're using the pitch postcard, um, we have the facility to stamp again if it doesn't stamp first time. So we will go in and do it again. 
and make it as black as you like. So the item number for the inks is 190418, that's for the brand new monochromatic one, so if you've already got one to four already this would be a great addition to your set. Um, if you haven't got any of our ink pads at all and just want to try some, I encourage you just to pop on the website and have a look at the variation of colours on there, because there is a lot. Just going to make sure, press on that bit there, get some ink on there, there we go. So I'm happy with that one, so let's get this onto the card. clean this So I always find that if you think your card is lacking, lay it on a piece of black card and let it pop. Um, sometimes that's all it is lacking is a bit of black card. So we'll just get this onto a card that I've already made. And I'm not going to pop a sentiment on because I'm just, just for demonstration. But I just wanted to show you how you can create some great looking artwork with a little ton of weather. There we have. So that's just with the brand new inks. They are super cool. Um, so if you've already got our inks and you're wanting to get the next collection, then here it is. So I want that black silhouette stamp just to have a highlight on there. So I've got a white gel pen. I'm going to like make it look like the moon is reflecting off. Just move this out of the way. So I'm going to add a highlight onto this white, um, this white bit of foliage here because the light would reflect on here. I'm not sure if you can see that. Don't have to be too careful. There we have it. An amazing looking card. So you could stamp a sentiment straight through or you could leave it as is. Do a bunch of note cards, all different colours, all different stamps pop them in a nice little box or with a belly band around and you've got an amazing gift set. So, amazing. So, that's demonstration number one, using the brand new inks. I hope you like them. They are truly amazing and I hope the colours are coming across on our set. Um, but I, I encourage you to go to the website, have a look at all the different colours on there, but these will be a winner, I'm absolutely certain of it. And these will be launched on Create and Craft as well in the next couple of weeks. So, we'll just pop that to one side. So, let's move on to demonstration at number two. Now, I did promise that we would do some circles of light, something a little bit different for those people that have purchased them so they can get some inspiration. So, what I've done is I have got the stamps with me and we didn't go into much detail on say, on creating craft. It is very difficult to do that sometimes when everything's happening and it's getting quite busy, um, they do tend to rush through things, so I just like to take a bit of time to explain what's actually on the set. So when you get a, your stamps at home, you can see physically what's in the set. So you, you get the large flower on all of the sets, as you can see here, I'll just pop this behind. So you get the large flower, but it's the little ones that I wanted to um, show you. So you get the little ones, which replicate the big ones, and the little one can be used for an insert or an envelope or anything like that. So, and it's this one that we're going to use in our next demonstration. So it's a few of them actually, but I'm just going to show you how beautiful these little ones stamp, first of all. So 
So just get some card. So from each stamp set, I've already gone ahead and prepared, but I just want to show you how beautiful these are. So I'm just going to pop it in my Eureka and I've just got the stamp and I'm going to place it face down. Close the door. There's so much detail in these, it's absolutely amazing. So you can really get in with your paints and, you know, really enjoy it. So you can see, even as small as it is, you can see all the detail on there. It's absolutely amazing. So you can get in with your pens and your paints and things like that. Sparkle pens, get lots of light and shade on there. It's amazing. So ahead of time, what I did... Sorry. So ahead of time, I went ahead and I took all the little elements out of each stamp set. So the daisy, the rose, the poppy everything like that and I die cut them because as you know they've got coordinating dies and I die cut them and I've coloured them all as individuals so I'll just pop them on a piece of card for you so you can see them as you can see some roses some daisies some lilies and some poppies all different all different colored all different sizes on there so i wanted to show you that if you only use these little ones you can still create a great looking card so i have this aperture card here with a hole straight through the middle i'm a big fan of these aperture cards because you can create great looking artwork it actually frames what you're doing so we're just going to create a bouquet which is amazing so i have got some little foam pads here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create a bouquet so firstly I'm going to seal this one down so it doesn't flop around I'm just going to get some tape and seal it shut so if you have got these these we did put some of these in our project boxes so I know a few of you will have these at home but they are easy to create should you have a die at home so I'm just going to fold that in and then it's just going to seal it in place so it doesn't move around so to create the bouquet and get it even and easy looking on the eye, this is how I do it. So I just get a pad. So my first one that I stick down, I'm going to stick in the centre. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to double pad it so it's got some height on it, so I've got something to work with. So say, for instance, you pick your favourite, pick the favourite out of the bunch of um, ones that you've die cut and coloured. And then stick it behind. So this one's double padded. Like so. So I'm just going to put this in, bang in the centre of this aperture. Like so. So it's already got some dimension. And then I'm just going to get some single ones. So I'll pop a daisy this time. And I'm just going to slot it in like so. And then we will get um, another daisy and double and pad this one. Remember, flower heads don't all look the same way, so try and you know vary where everything's looking. So I've done a double pad on the centre, and I'm just going to do a few around that have one pad. I'm just going to slot this one in here, like so, and then keep going. Don't be scared to sit them on top as well. And then we've got a beautiful poppy which is coloured in yellow. And what we're going to do with this one is we're going to do well, some flat ones as well. So it creates some true dimension.
So already you can see like a bouquet coming together. Oops. And don't, don't, in fact, I'll leave that there now because it's going to have glue underneath, so it will cause me a problem if I don't. So I'm just going to get this one. And I'll stick this one flat. And then we'll go back to putting some pads on. So, coming together nice, like it so far. <laughs> so if you want to do like a, a bunch of daisies on their own, it would look really lovely. Let's pop, just push that up so we can see our lily a little bit and then we'll have this one now. There we go. And then let's connect it all together and make it look like a bouquet. So we would traditionally have a thing from here. There would be one from the rose. So like I say, you don't have to be an artist for this one. So it looks like a bouquet already. And then I'm just going to draw a circle. I'm just going to draw a bow. have it so an amazing bouquet what I would probably do as well is stamp a sentiment and just have it hanging in but I love the white lines on this one so don't be afraid to give it a go you see the dimension there when you look down on it you can see can you see sorry it's not getting in shot cameras not right unfortunately but hey ho there you go you can see it from above so you could actually do some stitch detail around there some pearls make it sparkly do whatever you wanted but I think that's a beautiful simplistic card brilliant sympathy card as well if you wanted to do them all in the same color so I really really like that one I hope you like it as well so at the end of the video you'll be able to tell me which demonstration you like the best as well so keeps me on my toes so I'll just move that one out of the way so let's move on to our third demonstration. So we're going to use the um, circles of light again. And we're just going to have a little bit of a play this time. So what I've got here is some watercolour cardstock. Um, this is Strathmore that I'm using. So it'll give me a beautiful finish. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop some water. Let me choose an ink pad. So I'm just going to get my swatch. And I'm going to decide which colour to do, um, we'll do MCO2, which is the purple based monochromatic one. MCO2. Like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop two spots of ink on here. And I am just going to... One second. Grab a straw. And I don't know if you've seen this technique before, but it blows it out so it gives like a beautiful background. So you could spritz with this with some water and um, create like a, a true watercolour background. You could drop some water. could drop some water on with your paintbrush, flick it down and it will naturally bleed, not too much. 
and then all you need to do is get your paintbrush and blow it. So this might take some of my energy, but watch my head, just move my head out of shot when I'm doing it. Can you see? Can you twist it round? Now, I'm going to pop some more colour on there, but I'm going to do a different one because I'm absolutely enjoying myself. So, pop a bit of green on there. Just pop a bit more water on there so we've got a bit of scope for the ink to move around should it want to. I'm going to blow in the opposite direction this time so the ink disappears to the other side so we don't get them contaminated. So I hope you can see that. It is really, really dark but it will dry lighter so I'm just going to blast this off with my gun. Get your gun good and hot. So you need to make sure before you move to the next step that this um, layer is completely dry because I'm going to do a lighter colour on top. But you must dry between colours because you'll end up with an awful muddy mess. And if you're not sure whether the ink has dried or not, as soon as the shine disappears, you know it's dry. So I think we should be okay with that if we get some contamination. I'm not going to worry about it because I think you all understand at home what I'm trying to say. So what I'm going to do is this time I'm just going to drop some more water on. I can't see the water dropping on there but trust me it is going on there. And this time I'm going to pop some orange on top. This is quite abstract so this is um, thinking outside the box a little bit. This time we'll do three spots. No we'll do four. Because we can. And this time I'm just going to blow again. So I'm just going to pull my head out so you don't get a, a view of my head. probably looking at that I'm looking at that now thinking my son's been playing with my paints looks a mess but trust me it will come together and as I always say to you persevere with your artwork because you know you get some really good looking looks just by sticking it out So let's get some um, detail on the back of this one. So if you're into your altered art and things like that, well, this is altered art. Stepping outside the box a little bit on this um, VT. 
So let's swap this one out. So if you manage to get your circles of light um, ones, you will have seen that they all have a variation of abstract circles on there. Some geometric patterns. I'm just going to pop this one back. So I'm just going to use a large one on this daisy one because that's what I've just used. So, And I think what we will do is we will stick with the colour theme because if you start mixing lots and lots of colours you're going to end up with something where you don't know where to look and it's a little bit difficult. So get the abstract element of it. And we will use our new colours, so we will go for what we've used in the in there. So we'll use MCO2, and you can see how beautiful the stamp as well. So then we'll swap it round. So if you manage to buy just one of the sets, you can achieve this card with whatever set you purchase because each one has the geometric patterns um, included. Yes, given they are a variation of shapes, but it doesn't matter. You can create the, the biggest shape you wanted to, the smallest shape you wanted to. You have the facilities to do it in all of our stamp sets. So if you really do like mixed media and things like that, you know, you can ink blend around the edges, you know, bring it to life in that sense. So I'm just going to clean this one off. So I'll just go back to the stamp set. Here we have it. So I'll put this one back on the stamp set and we'll swap it out for the actual daisy head. this one on here and this one we're going to do in a true black Go for it again. So you won't be able to see that on set there, but there is a daisy there, but it's just the underneath I needed. I needed the geometric pattern in black and I need the flower head and the stalk because what I'm going to do is I'm going to 3D the elements on there. So ahead of time, I had my daisies, which I pre-coloured, as you all know, what I love to colour. And to create a white flower, you just need a grey pen and add highlight on the ends and the centre where the flower would naturally be darker and this create, creates an instant white flower. 
So just get my pads. And I'm gonna double pad the first one. And then I will put it on the second one, just one pad on the second one though this time. Now this is quite abstract, isn't it? So let's think about where we're going to pop this one. This is the great thing about them, you see, you can pop them wherever you want. You know, just go for it really. Shall we do it like that? I think we'll go like that. Like so. So just going to take this out of here. get this onto the card and it's going back to what I said earlier about popping it onto some black cardstock and popping it onto glitter and black this one so you'll be able to see how instant it pops off the page so while I'm just um, doing the boring bit don't forget, I'm on Create and Craft on Sunday at 12 o'clock. I am launching something amazing, something different to what we've done before, but um, I'm certain you're all going to love it. Well, I'm hoping you're all going to love it. Um, nervous, a little bit, yes, but I, um, I've put a lot of hard work into Sunday. It's Create and Craft's birthday, so it's going to be an amazing event anyway, but um, if you can tune in and you do get the time to watch, that would be brilliant, So just so you all know what's happening. Then, what I should have done is I should have stamped the sentiment along here before I 3 d these, but it's no good doing that now because these have got pads underneath now. So you pop a sentiment under there and you would have basically an abstract image with, again, little to no effort. Use pinks, use blues, use the colours that you love at home. This is just a demonstration for everybody to, you know, play. It's technique based, take the techniques and you do what you want with them at home. I can't wait to see what you all do with them can't wait to see you all Sunday. Again, the item number for the monochromatic new inks is 190418 and if you do purchase them, I hope you have a fab time playing with them. I'm sure you won't be disappointed. So I will speak to you all later and I'll see you all Sunday at 12 o'clock. Take care everybody. Bye.